Hello everyone, it's Kate Richberg and I am live from beadshop.com on a free tip Friday. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm very excited to be back in the saddle for free tip Friday. It's great to see everyone. I'm going to just grab my devices here and make sure that I am up and running so I can see you guys. And then we are going to get started because we have tassels to make. Uh, okay, so let me see. Let me pull up this device here. It gives a chance for everybody to jump on. And I can see who's here. Let's see. Bear with me here just a second. I want to make sure I can see everybody on here. Am I on? Am I on? And there I am. I can see myself. I can see you guys. I think I can anyway. There we are. I see everybody. Hello. There are the comments. Sometimes comments get enabled. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes, you know, working with this whole setup, it's like, a new learning curve with Facebook Live every week. So thanks for sticking in there with me. And yes, I see everybody jumping on. Great, 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 great. Well, it's great to have everybody here. Well, um, this uh, Friday, today, this Friday, we're going to have a really fun time with some tassels. Um, for those of you who are in our bead table group, um, the beadshop.com, um, I guess, private group that we have, um, there's all kinds of great stuff that always goes on in there. And our bead table member, Ali Mori, um, I want to give a big shout out to. She created a series of really beautiful tassels, and you guys love them so much. And I love them so much that I thought it would be really, really fun to share them with you. So that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go over them with you. If you haven't seen it, you can... Hi, and there's Gita. Hello, Miss Gita, all the way from Denmark. Thank you so much for all of that you do for us every week on Facebook Live. Um, you can go right over to our blog, uh, the Bead Table blog, and I've already listed what I'm going to use, and the photos are there as well of Allie's pieces, so you can see those um, as well if you're not in the group. But if you're not in the group, hop on over to our Facebook group, it's called the Bead Table, beadshop.com community, and join. Uh, you have to answer a couple questions, and we'll let you in. It'd be great to see you over there. Um, I see our friend, uh, oh, so many of our friends, but Brenda Schwader is also on. Hello, my friend. Brenda. Um, a lot of you I know watch Brenda's Facebook Lives on Wednesday. She is the manufacturer and designer of um, Now That's a Jig, and she does some great things. Um, the wire working uh, stuff that's going on over on her Facebook Live and on her site is fantastic. So if you dig wire, but you don't know Brenda or you haven't seen her designs, I recommend it to jump right on over there. And she was the... Um, the instigator, if you will, for the Project Embellish Challenge that we did um, at uh, Bead and Button this past June. So that lady has a lot of smarts right up here in her head. So that was super fun. Um, okay, so, and thank you so much in the feed. Um, uh, we're getting links. Gita is linking everything there. So thank you, thank you uh, for doing all that. So, um, let me, uh, without further ado, I suppose we should get started. Yes, it was, of course, and Brenda, I just saw you and Ava, uh, Eva Sherman as well. Fantastic, Eva Sherman, my sister in, uh, in metal smithing. So, you guys are prima, prima, prima. Um, okay, so it's great to have everybody here. Um, I also want to give a quick shout out. I don't know if you can see this. I need to kind of move. I'm trying to look at 
the, the camera and move myself around. I'm wearing my beautiful birthday brooch. Last month was my birthday and my dear friend Tammy, when we had our Texas adventure, gave me this wonderful, wonderful brooch. So I've been wearing it. I've had it on my apron, my work apron, but I thought I'd brighten up my day with it here. So that was a little uh, prezi from our friend, my friend Tammy Del Nero. So thank you, Tam. And uh, I'm not wearing earrings I made today. These were from my great grandma, my great grandma Lily. If my mom is watching, she might recognize them. But the bracelet, I know that you guys will be asking. This is, um, it's under, I think, Tricks to Looming, or it might be under Tapestry. I'm going to have to look, but I think it's under Tricks to Looming. It's my three wrap um, that I did. Um, super fast and easy, so if you're looking for a great looming weekend project, it's a great one to do. Okay, so that's what I'm wearing. I feel like I'm the red card at the Oscars. Who are you wearing? Uh, so let's get this turned around and get you guys uh, working, um, and I'll share with you what we're doing today. So let me turn the camera. Bear with me here for a moment as I turn. Oh gosh, don't look at my messy desk my messy third we have three desks in this office um oh and look who's here what a surprise uh i have three desks in my office cara and i uh work on two of them and sometimes myra works on one um but it just depends so we're we're working on a few things there but you know clean desks are of course a sign of a sick mind so i will have you guys look at um, the sleeping kitty. He is sleeping on some of the things that I need. But, you know, what are you going to do? I know, Mr. Naughty Pants himself. So let's see, uh, let's see if he's going to behave himself today. We shall see. Um, he is a good boy most of the time. Most of the time that Mr. as as we like to call him and as you guys know Mr. Naughty Pants so there there he is alrighty so I'm going to uh, get the camera kind of over where I'm working you know it's I'm gonna I'm actually now all you can see is Alfred <laughs> that's all we're gonna do on free tip Friday today you guys how about that we'll just have Alfie we'll just sit here for an hour and stare at the cat. How does that sound? There we go. I see beads. That's what we're looking for. There we go. He's not fussed at all, are you, Alfred? Let me get a little closer down here. And there we go. Okay. And I want to get this cat off of my papers. You know, what do they say? Never wake a sleeping cat or a sleeping kid. There we go. Alrighty. Now I've got my papers that we need. Okay. Alfred, you just sit right there and don't bother me <laughs> as I'm working. What would we do without our pets, right? Okay, so now that I'm situated and I'm settled, thank you for that. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, I want to open up these blinds a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Maybe make it a little bit brighter on what we've got going on here. Okay, so let's talk tassels. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Tria. My boss sticker on my, on my computer. I think Emily gave me that for Valentine's Day. She brought stickers in that day, I think. That's what they were. Um... So let's take a look uh, at some of Allie's things here um, and uh, take a look at some of the samples because I really, really, I, I was just blown away by what she did. I hope you guys can see this. Let me tighten up the screen just a little bit so you guys can see that photo. And again, those photos I put already on our blog, um, the Bead Table blog, so you can see those up close. So, what we've got here are three different tassels that she made, and you can see that this one here, all the way over to my left, or the left-hand part of your screen, um, it's a single tassel. This piece up here, it's kind of hard for you to tell, but this is a clamshell end tip right there, okay? 
Then we've got a 6 aught seed bead. And then there's a matubo, a 2 aught matubo there. Then there are branches that come off of this one. And the way that she utilized these, which I just think is amazing, is in this beautiful necklace. Can you see that there? Let me get this a little bit bigger. And so she strung, she made one, two, three, four, five of these separate um, tassels with branches. And then what she did was she attached the uh, clamshell end tip to an oval jump ring, and then my guess is a soldered ring here. There's the uh, probably 1.5 millimeter leather, the two aught matubo, a queen or a king shadow, whichever one. Uh, maybe it's a king shadow, though it might be a queen, I'm not sure. Um, but they both would work. And then these are roller beads, and the roller beads have sh such big holes. Then these were just strung. As the beads were strung on, the tassels were strung on as well. Now, it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to go back to this single one so you guys can see that. See how there are two legs coming out from one, the Matubo, one leg there, one leg there. And then from this leg, we've got one, two, three branches off of that right? So this is the one, this really caught my eye. So I'm actually going to be working on this one today uh, during our time together. Um, this guy here, she made two of these, and you know what, I didn't print out the photo, um, but she just simply placed these on ear wires um, for earrings, and she made a pair of them. I'll uh, drop it in the, um, in the, uh, on the blog as well, so you can see it later. And then this big guy over here, this super lovely, what I love about this is, can you see how the tassel leg is a loop? That is so clever and inventive. And I think, um, and I've never made a tassel this way. I don't know why. It's such a clever idea. The bulk, the, the loops at the bottom give a nice weight to the tassel, which I really, really like. And you can see as she goes down, she's used color repeats to great effect in here. Okay. Oh, thanks, Drea. Drea said the king size shadow is closest um, in size to the roller beads. So that uh, that's a good one. I know, Brenda, I agree completely. It's super lush, you know, luscious Jackson. It's beautiful. And what she did here was there's two, four, six, seven, eleven knots. Then it looks like maybe an A dot and an A dot here. And notice the color blocking here, repeated all the way across. And then that nice big A dot again going into um, the six aughts. Again, more color blocking with O beads, more color blocking here with six aughts. And then, like I did that little dragonberry bead that I did on Wednesday, it's the dragon scales that are separated by an 11 knot bead, and then she repeats that down here. The matubos are there um, to give it a little bit of heft as well. So, you know, simply just, and this, you can start this piece if I were doing this. I would probably start this piece by stringing all of these tassel loops. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, I think tassel loops. That looks like one. That looks like one, two, three, three, four, five, six. I think there are six total. Okay. And then, um, yeah, these flat spacers here, these are the O beads, Lorraine, right here. Use like he, she, or you could use he, she beads. You could also use on the drops down here, and I've pulled some for me to use today. You could just use also our check drops with these and put a check drop right at the bottom, which would look killer, I think. Um, Ginger, what I would do with this is I would string, I'm going to do all of my stringing today, whoops, with KO. I got the smoke color KO, I think, um, which kind of blends into everything. And I would probably use this doubled as I go down. And so I'd have a multiple, um, a multiple strand, um, or, you know, a multiple, um, what am I trying to say? Double strand, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, a double strand coming all the way through and back up. And then all of the strands of the tassels come up in here 
I would put a wire wrap, I do a wire wrap loop, this is probably a big hold bead which everything fits through and the wire wrap fits through. So then it all gets tied off under that loop here and I'll draw it on there so you guys can kind of see it. This would be a wire, it's coming down from here. And it's a wire wrap loop, then all of these strands get knotted on, if that makes sense. Right, just like that. Okay. Then it just comes through, comes up, and then this is around, comes around, and then wire wraps. Okay. So that's that's how this goes together. It's the same thing with this cap over here. I know, Brenda, we love our Gita. We could not... Um, we could not um, do all this linking and stuff without her, our super fan from Denmark. We love our Gita. So here is the um, the cone. This one's called cutest cone right here. That cutest cone, um, it's the same thing here. All of these strands come up underneath here, underneath a wire wrap loop. They all get knotted on. And then that is what is hidden by this cone, like that, right? Then it comes up and is wire wrapped again here, okay? This yellow bead, I think, um, this must be a big hold bead. We must have something. I think it's stuff, all stuff that she used from bead shop. Um, so my guess is it might be somewhere in the vintage find, finds, maybe. Um, I don't know, Dre, if you're still on and searching, it might be this. Um, but I can always double check with Allie. But anything that has a big hole would do it. And then finally, this guy here, this last one, what we're going to do is I'm going to string these two legs separately and then bring them up. I'm going to finish mine actually just a little bit differently, but I'm going to shoot two doubled strands through this way and through this way and then we'll see um, we'll see how it works actually maybe it's three strands I'll see because can you tell I'm gonna make it up as I go right it might be 10 millimeter olive jade it just depends on if the olive jade has a big hole I'll figure it out and I'll drop it in the um, on the blog post you guys so you can figure out so you can see what that might be okay so let me get to actually making, because as to no surprise to anyone, um, I'm doing this live and right on camera. So let me grab these photos out of the way. Oh, before we go, before I start that though, let me show you the piece then that Allie did with this. She used our Born Yesterday as an inspiration. And this closure here, she just did... Um, Janice and I did something similar. Um, giant melons, that might be it too. The giant melons might work uh, for that other one. This closure was from Janice's Mendocino um, bracelets, I think, uh, kind of inspired by that. And then all of this is just the very simple Born Yesterday um, flat macrame and just terminating in one of these carved vintage finds. So I think it really looks great. I think she really did a really beautiful, beautiful job with that. And then this attaches underneath, my guess is she's attached it here um, with the, uh, put a big um, roller bead and then just some macrame around it so it connects onto that, um, connects onto that flat vintage find. Yeah, the button is really cool. It's just the leather. You can see it's come around through. This is one of our brass um, our brass rings. Comes through, and then she's macrameed around it. And then the, the leather just comes right out the button and knots there and there. So I think it's, I think it's a great way to close it. I think it's really, really uh, nicely done. So, Allie, thank you so much for your inspiration. Um, today for this free tip Friday. Let me put these guys aside underneath Alfred who's still sleeping over here and let me get to what I actually used in this project. Let me pull it up so I can see what I have for you here. Um, here it is. So 
I, um, as I said, I'm going to do kind of that multi-leg patterned one um, that I kind of liked. And I pulled some, um, these are uh, emerald or sea green Picasso drops. So I'm just going to cut these up, put them down right here. Okay. And then, I don't know, I thought I, you know, I, I when I'm under pressure, I just kind of go in and I pull a pallet. So I hope this is working out. Hopefully we don't have to tweak it too much. Um, but nothing like pressure to make you choose your beads, right? These are Bermuda Blue Dragon Scales. And we talked a little bit on the Dragon Scale show about having Dragon Scales that had two sides to them. So the Bermuda Blue has a silver side and then the Bermuda Blue um, crystal side. Then I have um, the Emerald Blue, I'm sorry, the Emerald Green, Emerald Celsian O beads. And I thought that picked up the green of the, of those, um, Sea green, sea green Picasso drops. Yes, yeah, set these beads free. That's right, Lorraine. Let's do it. I chose a Matubo, and I used the um, Jet Chrome because I like that silvery color, and I thought it pulled that silver from the uh, Dragon Scale. And then, uh, what did I use? I used the po Picasso Opaque um, cobalt 11 knot because who doesn't love a Picasso seed bead? Tammy asked if the linen would fit through the dragon scales and drops. I think it would, Tam. The linen is pretty thin, especially that three ply, so I think it would work. Um, you know, no harm in trying. But that wax linen, you know, you can get so much stuff, so many strands in there. Um, you know, I was just doing it on the, um, beads, baubles, and jewels. I was using the wax linen, so, um, I, I would try it out. Uh, matte opaque cobalt luster seed bead. Look at that one. This palette's kind of shaping up, even if I do say so myself. Not too bad. And last but not least, I've got a 6 aught. and it's the dyed silver line denim. And I thought, um, I thought those might look kind of nice. So it's kind of like a blue-green kind of a palette thing. And yeah, Ellen, you could. You could split the wax linen for sure. That's the beauty of it. I'm going to quickly, uh, with my phone here, take a quick photo of this since it's laid out. Um, so I can put that up on the blog. So bear with me here as I bring my camera in and take a quick photo because we're all about multitasking here <laughs> during this free to Friday broadcast. There we go. Um, there we go. Yeah, I like this palette too. Thanks, you guys. I'm kind of digging it. Um, I don't really have a beading surface. That was kind of remiss of me, wasn't it? But let me just, um, you know what? There's one right here on my desk. Let me stand up and grab it and bring it over. I need, you know, we have these nice little bead mats. Where's a bead mat when I need it? So there we go. All right, so let me make this shot a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. And let me get my photo so I can kind of follow along um, with what we're doing. So here's Allie's piece here, and here's the photo. Okay, so this is what I've got right here, this guy. So I'm going to start... Like I said, the thread that I'm going to use, let me push this forward a little bit. I think we're in. It's a little bit off. My hands are kind of to the side, but I hope you guys are okay with this view. Um, it's working out for me pretty well. I'm going to use a size 10 seed bead needle. Um, you know, that's kind of, it's a good go-to. Um, I think it'll work out just fine. Uh, and I'm going to use, if I can find my thread, it kind of rolled away. <laughs> my mom said it's so quiet. Are you really at work? I am. Uh, I'm in my office with the door closed, so that's why it's so quiet. <laughs> so um, here's this. 
I know, Krista, wouldn't you rather be in San Juan Batista at the bead retreat right now? It would be such a perfect fall day for all of us to bead together. It really would. I'm going in a few weeks, I'm going with my mom to a quilt retreat, so I'll do a free tip Friday there with my mom, so you guys will be able to see it again. And those of you who didn't get to join us, you'll be able to see it as well. It's such a nice, wonderful place there. I'm going to use K.O. Uh, just because I had K.O. sitting around, um, I like using K.O. for my projects, and it'll give it a nice hand, I think, for this. I'm not sure what Allie used. You could also use Fireline. Um, but see how I'm waxing this um, with this old piece of beeswax right here? But I just lay it down and run it through. And it really just tames everything down. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks, Brenda. Um, so I'm going to get my threads together here. So if I look at this and I look at one of these tassel legs, let me pull this in so you guys can kind of see. It's kind of made up in two parts. Can you see that if I draw this line? It's this half and then this half here. So what I need actually, I think I need three strands that are going to go down like this. I could make them single, um, I guess, but I don't know. Part of me just wants to put needles on them and put them, make them a double strand. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Okay, so bear with me here as I kind of pull this together because again, I'm making this up on the, on the fly. So here's the, the needles, and I'll just do one of those sections because the second section will just repeat. So I need three of these. So I need one. Let me just quickly cut some more. This is a second one right here, and then a third one uh, right here. Okay. Yes, Lorraine, it will be nice to see my mom on that free tip Friday. I need to decide what we're going to do. Um, it's such a fun quilt weekend that we have. I need to kind of work on my projects for that weekend. Some kind of quilt-like thing. We'll see. If I don't have my project planned out, I just kind of sit there and chat and fuss around. So I want to make sure that I'm productive that weekend. But, you know, what are you going to do? Tammy asks, could you use Softlex and crimp on the extra strands? Sure, Tam, I think you could. Maybe I would use Soft Touch for this. Um, maybe. And loop it back through. Um, we'll see. I don't know. But for tassels, for me, for something like this, I like using thread. I think it's my, it's my fave. So I'm just going to quickly string all three of these needles together. Um, just like so. There's two. And, and let's do three. All right. Oh, Teresa, that's nice. You're at work. Sneaking in some Facebook Live time. Well, coincidentally, I'm at work too right now, but... Thankfully, I don't have to sneak in my Facebook Live time with you guys. It's just my job, which is kind of awesome when I think about it. Um, so then, after I string these through doubled, sometimes I give them a little, um, a little, you know, pass through the beeswax to kind of hold those strands together. Okay, good thread management is sometimes half your battle, right? Soft flex, yeah, Spidey, soft flex would be stiffer, um, but the soft touch is so thin that um, it would be, um, it would be, I think, easy enough to, um, to work with for a tassel as well. Okay. All right, so here's my three. So now let's get back to Allie's photo. Let's get this photo out. So what she did, I'm gonna ignore this top part 
right now, I think, um, because I can put all that stuff on later. I'm going to start with this leg, and I'm going to pass all three. Um, well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll pass all three. Do I have a bead stopper in here? Yes, I do. That'll work. So actually, let me bring all of these together. And let me get a bead stopper here. Hopefully I have enough thread. We'll see. I didn't want to make the thread too long, but there we go. So this goes here like that. Okay, that goes in. So that's going to stop everything. Now I've got a Matubo, or a 6 aught it looks like, and then a Matubo. So I'm going to take all three of these needles. And I don't know, there's a million ways you can do this, right? I just felt like using needles today, I suppose. I know you're thinking, well, Kate, what are you going to do about that um, bead tip that you've got there? Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that. I have a plan. So there are those, okay? So now it looks like this kind of branches, if I look at this, I have one, two, three, four, um, four 11 knots. The trouble with three needles is that they get tangled. There we go. Allie, if you're watching this or you watch this later, you're going to be laughing going, Kate, that's not at all how I did this. <laughs> so here's one, two, three, four. Is there four? Maybe there's five. Maybe I'll put five on here. Okay. I'm going to slide this through. Now let me see. This could, again, it could all end in tears, but let me see. It looks like all of these are on all of the threads. So let me see if I can get these three needles through all of these five lineups here. There we go. And I can. Not too bad, right? So I'm going to slide all this down. So that leg is going to be here. Later I'll add that other leg over here. Okay. So it looks like uh, we've got four, one, two, three, four of the six aughts. No, eight aughts, I think, is what those are. So let me get those. One, two, three, four. Put those on. Let me get in the... Can I use all three of these needles like one needle? Maybe. We'll see. There we go. Four, I said, right? Again, if you use thicker, like let's say, like Tammy was saying about trying the wax linen or whatever, we could, um, we could use that and maybe not have needles. But all of these size 10 needles are just going right through there, so that's working for me. So I've got these guys here. So I've got this tassel leg, okay? So there. So then it looks like she kind of branched out and did some six aughts, right? So let me branch out, put one set over here and one set over here. And it looks like she used, uh, looks like it's another six aught, but in a different color because she was clever. But I'll just use this blue one. Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. We're just using this as some inspiration, but I'll use another six aught right over here. Now it's time, I think, she brought these through. Another, um, those were eight aughts, so this one's another six aught. Okay. That's kind of a fun little little bit of texture and stuff out there. Let me get a little closer so you guys can see that. There we go. I think that's better. So now, uh, let me get this a little bit closer so you guys can see the pattern too as I'm working with this. 
looks like that's a six aught, so now <coughs> they branch out. So let me do this branch here because it's a single. So let me get a single. These needles are kind of working for me, I think. So we've got four of those 11 aughts. Right? That's right, Lori. I'm just going to do me. One, two, three. And, you know, that it just goes to show, you know, you can't ever completely copy someone bead for bead. You have to kind of put your own stamp in there. So I'm going to put those three. I'm going to put three or four. Maybe it's three of these. And I'm going to start putting in the O beads because I think I need a little bit of a color shot in there. So I'm going to put on a few O beads. I'm going to slide all this up. And yeah, that's looking pretty good, I think. <clears throat> kind of tighten everything up with the tension. This is sitting a little funny, so let me make it sit correctly. There we go. And this guy here. Now it just looks like we bead until... Um, until we don't want to bead anymore. So I'm going to do a few of these <clears throat> on this leg. So I'm about maybe right there. So maybe I'll add something that's a little bit of a contrast. Maybe I'll contrast those O beads around that six aught. And then uh, a few more of these guys. Let me get into frame so you guys can see this. Now, getting a little closer down here towards the dragon scale, <clears throat> looks like we had another six aught, an eight aught, some O beads. And then, the dragon scale. Yes, yeah, size 10 uh, seed bead needles is what I'm using. So see, there's the dragon scale. Dragon scale's on. Get a little closer so you guys can see that. Dragon scale is on. Sorry, I was a little further back. There we go. Now, I'm just going to run this back up here all the way, trying really careful to be really careful, we're doing this really carefully, trying not to split the threads. This one here, going back through, and then back through here. And I'm going to go back through the whole shebang here. Let me move my hand around so you guys can see that. All the way back up. Will it fit through those 11 knots? I think so. And I'm going to go through. Okay. Then I'll tighten this up. Sorry, I'm covering it with my hand, but you'll see this in just a second. There we go. And you don't want it to be so tight, you guys, that it's super stiff, right? So that's a nice little little tassel leg, okay? So on this one, let me, looks like, let's get the pattern back in here. So it looks like we went down singly for a little while, and then they kind of branched off like that, right? Yeah, I don't know, Trish. I might need more contrast. It is kind of monochrome, but we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of in a monochromatic mood. Maybe today. Um, maybe if I use more, um, more Matubos in here, too. So let me get some 11 knots. It looks like I've got some 11s. So I'll put the 11s on. And I just split, I think, both of these guys... Um, these 11, sorry I'm doing this off camera, let me do this on camera, 
Okay, and then I will get these guys through. And, you know, I'm just following Ellie's pattern just to kind of give me um, kind of a path to follow, but once you kind of have the the making of this down, how it's kind of engineered together, you can kind of jump around um, jump around and, you know, see what works for you. Okay, so there's that. Now, uh, it looks like I need to jump up to some eights. Uh, it looks like there's one eight here going to the side. And then I'll slide these through. And another eight on that side. I like the way that she kind of did these little kind of double, double dudes there. So they kind of add a little bit of textural interest. And then it looks like we went through a six, so let me do that. Give it again a little tighter so you guys can see a close-up of that. And I'll get a little closer to camera after I string this up so you guys can see it. I know sometimes it's frustrating when you can't see super up close, which is kind of a bummer. Let me see. Let me see if I can also, it feels a little dark. Let me see if I can get a light on here, put my desk light on. See if that's a little bit better. There we go. That might be a little more, whoops, a little more light for you guys. Though I don't want to knock my desk lamp over. There we go. See if that, see if that's a little bit better. Okay, so, uh, so what am I doing now? Uh, looks like there's a Matubo, so I'll put a Matubo on. And it looks like there's some O-beads. So I'll put some O-beads on. Um, yeah, you know, holding these needles together as one seems to be working for me. Then uh, I'll just, yeah, check that. That's not too bad. Then these start to uh, branch off. Okay. Yeah, I agree, Amanda, with monochromatic. I love monochromatic, and I do it a lot. Uh, but lots of textures, I think, do give it some visual, some visual interest. I agree. Uh, looks like there's three of them here. So one, two, three, and then some eight dots. One, two, three, four, five of those suckers. And then a six aught. There we go. So many of our retreat people are watching today. It's almost like being at the bead retreat together. Isn't that a, that's a good thing, I think. Three of those O beads and then a dragon scale. Okay. So I'm going to leave, well, no, I'm actually going to walk this one back up. Uh, let me just go through, go through here. And I'm not going to go all the way back up to this one. I'm going to tie this leg off somewhere, maybe like right there. Maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, and I'll show you guys how I do that because threads are getting a little crowded up there. But I've got to have everything strung before I tie anything off. Okay. And let's see. Um, then for this side, again, those 11 knots. The 11 knots uh, do make these transitions uh, really nicely, the transitions between going from a single strand to a double strand. So I think that's a good thing. And Ellen commented that it is kind of like the Zen of stringing only in tassel form, which is exactly right. Um, we could all use a little Zen of stringing right about now, I think. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Let's see, a six aught, a Matubo, another six aught, uh, an eight aught. Sorry, let me get back into frame. Open that up a little bit. Um, a dot, some O beads. One, two, three. 
Now I'm going to go a little crazy. Instead of a dragon scale, I'm going to do an 11 knot, a drop, and an 11 knot. Yes. You could also, in this, see how Allie did here in this tassel. She put the dragon scales on the legs as well, which work nicely. So you could, if you wanted more dragon scale in this tassel design, you could put them along the legs, which I think would look cool. So now see what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to come back up through. Um, Rosie's asking 15 knots. Would 15 knot be too small? Um, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of 15 knots because they also are so freaking small. But, you know, try, it's no harm in trying. It's just beads, right? Um, but they might be a little teeny. See how I skipped going back through both of those beads I just went around so this is going to be like a little pico here at the end but I'm going to go up through all of these guys pass it on through go back up through that 11 aught and out up past the 6 aught where the other thread comes out okay there we go. So here's this one's tight. That one's tight. Not too tight. Okay. So those are put aside. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this one that I brought all the way back up. We can put that aside. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in And I'm going to tie these two tassel legs off. Okay? So the way that I do that, let me get pretty tight so you guys can see what I'm doing. All I'm going to do is, I'm going to tie this like I have end so many of my other stringing projects. I'm going to come in, I've got two strands here, one in my left hand, one in my right hand. And I'm just going to tie uh, one square knot you know, like the first knot that you use to tie your shoe. Just like that. And tighten that down. Okay? Now I'm going to flip everything over. So the square knot that I tie on the other side, that was actually a half hitch, so I'm going to tie a full square knot right over left and down. Left over right. and down like that okay this kind of large hold six aught kind of covers everything up I'm gonna get my glue get my baggie get my hypo tube cement put some right in there I'm gonna let that sit I always like my glue letting my glue sit overnight and then I'll clip, but I'll clip it away now, not real close, just so you guys can see it. I'll clip those tails away. Then I still have stuff going on up here, and now I'm ready to add my other, my other group of legs over here on this side, right? So this would be another section just like this coming out there. And look at how cool, let me get the plastic baggie out of here. Look at how cool the drop looks with the dragon scale. I think that looks great. But I know you're asking, you're like, so Kate, but what about the top? So let me show you. You could use <clears throat> an end tip like Allie did. It's the clamshell end tip here. That's right there. <clears throat> Get it a little tighter. And the clamshell end tip, you could just bring all of your strands up through there and tie a knot. But I think what I'm going to do instead, take that out. I 
I think I might just bring all of these strands back through, get a little tighter, back through that soldered jump ring. I don't think I'm going to do the step of having the, um, the end tip there. I'm going to do that by getting my collapsible eye needle. Okay. And I'm going to get that collapsible eye needle, shove all this thread through, including that thread that has the needle. Let me cut that away. Get a little bigger here. Now, this is why you've got to have big eye needles and collapsible eye needles and stuff in your stash, right? Because look, all of this stuff goes right through that eye of the needle. You can kind of push it down, whoops, except this one that's just being a little bit of a pain. There we go, get in there. The collapsible eye needle has that little twist on the end. Can you see that? So it holds all the threads where you want them to be. So you're not fighting them. And then, whoops, you gotta put it through. You gotta put it through the, the loop there, Richburg. Put it through the soldered ring and then take it back through those beads. And I think I'm actually gonna take it back and put it in between these two beads, in between the six aught and the two aught and the tubo. Slide it on down all the way. Take the needle off. Now, now you kind of have to wrestle with it just a little, but not too much, so that it all comes together. There it goes nice and evenly. Can you see that? So it's tied right on there. Now I knot that off just like I did down here. Okay, so split these threads in half, doesn't matter which threads are which. Here and here. Now a half hitch right over left, and the wax on all of these threads really helps to keep everything together. And down, just like they're one thread, flip it all over and do the same full square knot right over left and through the loop. I could have made my strands maybe slightly longer it's a little fussy, but it's not too bad. Right over left, and then make sure I'm doing it the right way. And then left over right. We glue it. Where'd that glue go on my messy desk? Do you guys see it? Oh, it's up here. my baggie. Dot of glue right in there. Put the lid back on before the hypo cement goes all over the place. There we go. So that's ready. Now you can see, again, let me pull Allie's out for reference. hard to see with all these threads. Let me just clean this up a little bit here. I'll clip them a little more close after it dries. But all these threads are making me a little nuts. There we go. So see what we've got here. We've got this one leg that's coming out here. I can still probably get my threads and everything back through here even though I've glued it. I can probably just do that with this one, or I can just make 
another kind of leg like that on, on this one ring. But I'll make this second one that has the three. And instead of doing all dragon scales, I'll do another, um, another drop down there at the bottom. Again, I could also, for more dragon scale fun, I could put more dragon scales, and I might do that on the second leg, just to have them poking out a little bit to make this a little more textural. I think that might look cool. But I'll finish this up, have Karen take a nice beauty shot of it, and we'll post it up in the blog in just a little bit. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you kind of like doing these tassels. I sure did. Uh, I can't wait to finish this up. And I'll, again, I'll have Karen take a good photo and you guys will be able to see it. But there it is, kind of a little more up close. Whoops. Up close and personal, if I can get it into the camera. There we go. Just like that. So I think it's fun. I think it's good times. Super fun. So, uh, oh, there's some... Alfie, some rumblings about the cat, so let me put these needles away and see if we can persuade him to say goodbye to everyone. Um, so this weekend, you guys, make sure that you have opened your newsletter today. Uh, we've got a fun offer in there that you don't want to miss. And um, we have uh, Drea and Janice are going to be um, uh, are going to be whoops sorry you guys something went a little funny with the camera here sorry about that there we go I think we're back to normal uh, Janice and Drea are going to be doing the walk tomorrow from Virginia the MG walk and some of you have very uh, generously donated to her walking fun. I'm going to start wa uh, making uh, the gifts, the thank you gifts this weekend. Um, if you want to learn more about it, you can go to our blog, The Bead Table. There's still time to donate. The Maybe we broke the internet. I'm not sure, but the donation page was down for a little while. I'm not sure if it's still down. But if it's down and you still want to make a donation and be in the running, um, oh, Andrea says the, the site is still down. But if you still want to be in the running and stuff for, um, for our little giveaways and our drawing and everything, just go ahead and shoot Drea an email um, and we can add you into the drawing and then you can make your pledge when the site comes back up. I think that we're... There's so many people that were excited about donating to the walk that they're having a few technical difficulties. So we're sorry about that, but we're sure that they're going to get things up and running. At least I hope they will. Um, but we'll get you in if you do want um, to um, to add to Drea's team, uh, to the bead shop team. Um, we would love to have you, and we would be very happy to add you into the drawing. I'm going to see if I can um, slide Mr. Naughty Kitty right into the picture. There he is. There's the boy. There he is right there. I'm going to turn the camera. You stay here with me, Alfred, and we'll say goodbye to everybody. There I am. Here I am. Oh, my hair all messy from beating. Let me fix myself. There we go. Fix myself up. There we go. Alrighty. And here's here's the boy. There he is right there. Alright. Say hi to everybody, Alfred. He's so dark. He's hard to see. Just like Vanta Black. Right? A little bit of Vanta Black. There's my baby. Okay. Well, you guys. Mwah. You were such a good boy today. He's exhausted. This beating just tires him out. Well, thank you so much, as always, for joining me right here on Free Tip Friday. And next week, uh, I have a really fun project for you guys. We are going to do the Designing a Cuff project, but my take on it, which includes, like, leather and chain and all kinds of cool stuff. So that stuff will be up on the website starting on Tuesday, so you can see that. Um, also, Drea just finished episode notes from the Dragon Scale episode uh, that I did on Wednesday, so you can check out the instructions for that. Um, but do um, 
do jump in and open your newsletters this weekend because we've got a great offer for you guys. It's time to start making those holiday beaded projects, so no time like the present to jump in. Um, yes and no, thank you. Um, Gita just linked Alfred's uh, Instagram account. It's true. He's a cat of the new millennium. He does have an Instagram account. We're so silly. Um, anyways, all right. So um, the the blog uh, for beadshop.com, you can go right to beadshop.com to our main page. If you scroll to the bottom, there's a link to the blog, but you can also Google beadshop.com blog. It's called The Bead Table, and it'll come right up. Okay, so uh, in about an hour or so after lunch here, um, Karen will finish the photos. I'll finish, uh, the blog has the list of what I use now, but I'll update it with some more photos and things like that, as well as the feed right here for this episode of Free Tip Friday. All right, you guys. <clears throat> um, yeah, the episode notes should be up uh, anytime because I just sent them to her uh, before, um, before we started uh, this broadcast. So they should be up in the next hour or so as well. Um, again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, someone's walking all over the seed beads, so I better sign off. I'll see you next week on Facebook Live. Have a fantastic and creative weekend, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.